Hi everybody, today we're going to be learning about the Industrial Revolution. We're going to learn about how people went from living on farms to working in factories and some of the important inventions during this time period. So the Industrial Revolution was when we as a society, America as a society, changed from being a society where most people were farmers to one where most people worked on the making of goods. And this started in England in the late 1700s, and then British immigrants who came to the United States brought their knowledge and their experience of what was going on in England and how this change was happening in England. They brought that over to the United States. Life here began changing in about the 1820s. Before the Industrial Revolution, things had really not changed for hundreds of years. The way that people lived and made their food and made their clothes, made their goods and the way that people had money had really been the same for hundreds of years. People grew their own food, they usually made their own tools, they made their own clothing out of their houses, and this was all going to start changing with the Industrial Revolution. So first of all, technology started improving at a rapid rate. We're going to learn about some of the big inventions of this time period, and those big inventions caused a lot of very quick changes. Machines started to take over. Um, the machines became very important to doing all of these jobs where before they hadn't even existed. Um, people who had been working in fields before and who had been farming started to realize that it made more sense for them to work in factories. Um, instead of people growing their own food and just eating their own food, People were in situations where they were earning money, they were getting paid to do their jobs, and then they were taking that money and going and buying what they needed in a store. Um, there was a big population boom in cities because most of the factories where things were being made were in cities. So there was a big population growth in cities. And then that led to a demand for new products. There were more people in these places, so more things needed to be produced. By about the 1850s, machines and factories were everywhere. So this happened very quickly. It was a very quick change for people. Um, it was actually inventors that set off the Industrial Revolution. So it was people coming up with new ways of doing things and faster ways of doing things that really started everything moving. These new machines really changed the way that work was being done. And we'll learn about a couple of them and how they changed the way work was being done. And the improvements in technology really changed the sorts of jobs that workers needed to do. And in some cases, it put people out of business. For example, like we said before, farming was how everybody was living. And all of a sudden, so many people were not living on farms anymore. And it began to put farmers out of business. And people began to realize that they perhaps needed to move to a city and get a job in one of these new areas in order to continue to make money for their family. So one of the first inventions was something called the spinning jenny. This was invented in 1770 by James Hargreave. And this allowed one person to spin eight strings at a time in order to be making fabric. So before, um, people used to use a spinning wheel, which would only enable them to make one string of fabric at a time. So you can imagine that that was a very long process. People would spin one thread of fabric, then they would use that thread of fabric once they had enough to actually put together um, a piece of clothing, but it would take a long time to make a piece of clothing, which is why people would only make clothing for their immediate family. They would work in their home and they would make it for the people around them. The spinning jenny enabled people to move much faster with what they were doing, and it led to the ability to mass produce clothing, which means to make a lot of clothing at once. And it began to make more sense for this to happen in a factory instead of a home. So this led to places called textile mills and factories where lots of things were being produced um, and then being sold to people instead of just making it in their homes for their families. Another big invention, which is connected to that, is called the cotton gin. So this was invented by Eli Whitney in 1793. Because of the spinning jenny, there was obviously an increased need for cotton. If people could make things quicker, then there was more of a need for cotton more quickly. The cotton gin was an invention that separated cotton seeds from usable fibers, because cotton is a plant that has to be picked, and there are seeds in it, and the seeds have to be separated from the rest of the plant before it can be used. 
So before this work had been done by slaves using their hands, so they had to individually pick out the seeds. The cotton gin enabled the separation to happen more quickly and therefore they were able to get more cotton um, produced more quickly in the South. The South was where this happened. That's where the big cotton plantations were. So a positive of this is it led to the South becoming very wealthy because people were paying for all of this cotton. A negative effect was that there was also an increase in slavery because they needed more people to do this work and the people that were doing this work in this case were the slaves. Another big invention was the steamboat. So the steamboat was created by mechanics and scientists in the 1700s and it was a boat powered by the steam engine. Before that, boats were not powered by engines. So this invention was a really big deal. Um, it was a boat that could carry large amounts of cargo and passengers. And the Mississippi River and the Hudson River were the places where these steamboats were traveling. They almost became like highways for boats, so water highways. And all of a sudden, people could make trips on these boats that would have taken months before, because before they were traveling by foot and by horse, and now they could travel by boat and they could get places much more quickly. It also created a lot of jobs in river towns, so towns that were on the river where the boats would stop, or where the boats would need crew members. There were a lot more jobs there available for people. It also increased trade because now we were able to get goods from one place to another much more quickly. So that cotton that was being produced in the South could travel much more quickly to other places. Similar to that, another transportation invention was the locomotive, what we think of as the train. So engineers in the US and England in around the 1800s started to create this rail cars that were powered by the steam engine. So before they weren't powered by engines, they were powered by horses. So they obviously moved much more slowly. So now steam powered rail cars made it possible to move heavy loads, so large amounts of things, long distances by railroad. With the boat, they could also do this, but it only worked in places that were on the river. Um, the locomotive, they began laying down tracks all across the country so that they could get goods all over the country. It didn't matter if you were near a river or not, they were laying down tracks to connect places throughout the country. This created lots of jobs because they needed people to build the trains, maintain the trains, lay down the tracks and operate the trains. So there was lots of new jobs. And then as tracks were laid down around the country, major cities became connected. People and goods could get easily from one city to another city where they hadn't been able to travel quickly between those places before. Americans also now had access to goods no matter where they lived. So even if you lived in a place that didn't produce a certain good, you could get that item because it could come on, train to, on the train to you. Before this, it would take about six months to cross the whole country. And now you could actually do it in five days or less. So I know to us, when we think about what well, we can travel in a matter of hours on an airplane across the country, five days sounds like a long time. But you have to remember that before that, it would take them six months to cross the country. So this was a big difference. Another invention was the telegraph. So this was created by Samuel F.B. Morse in 1837. And this was an invention related to communication. So the telegraph used wires to send messages immediately over long distances. And the way that it worked was these messages would come in in something called Morse code, which you might have heard of, and it's dots and dashes that represented letters and then people could translate that into the message that they were receiving. This connected cities and towns across the country because people that lived in different places were, this was the first time they were able to communicate with each other immediately versus writing a letter to someone and having to put it in the mail and then spend the time waiting for it to get there. This was an immediate communication so they could communicate faster than they ever had before. So your assignment now is to look at the Industrial Revolution Day One Independent Work. There is a passage there for you to read which talks about some of the things I mentioned in this video as well as some other things. And then there are some questions for you to answer. You can print it out and write your answers or you can look at it on the screen and write your answers on a piece of paper. You should use what you learned in this slideshow and 
me speaking as well as the passage to answer the questions.